Hey, what's up guys? Constant Upgrade here, back with another video, bringing back intros 2011 style. Uh, today, I want to show you how to do radial symmetry. This is a little confusing to me at first, um, but there's a couple uh, little kinks uh, in the hose here that um, I was able to figure out, um, and I think this should make, uh, make sense to you guys and help you uh, troubleshoot any problems that you're having. Uh, so first, let's bring in an object uh, to bring the radial symmetry to. Uh, let's go to mesh. Uh, let's just go with a plane for now. I'm going to rotate this on the x-axis by 90 degrees to make it uh, vertical. Uh, and then to, to further demonstrate what exactly is happening, uh, I'm just going to inset the face here. Inset the fa I swear I'm going to inset the face. Uh, and then we're just going to extrude it back a little bit like that uh, just so that you can fully see what's happening and doesn't just look like a piece of paper all right uh, so then what we're gonna have to do next is bring in a empty I'm just gonna bring in the, the plane axes it, it doesn't really matter what kind of empty you bring in um, but then we're gonna go to our object that we want to symmetrize and then we're going to add a array modifier now this is not doing what we want it to right now but it will I promise but as you can see, they're all going in a row. Uh, we don't want that. We want them to be rotated around this axis here. So what we're going to do is uh, set relative, turn that off. We're going to turn object offset on, and then we're going to use the empty. Alternatively, you can use the eyedropper uh, to select the empty. It doesn't really matter. Uh, what you see here uh, looks kind of cool, I guess, uh, if you want that. We don't want that, though. Uh, the issue is that we need to uh, apply the uh, scale and rotation I, I honestly don't know uh, which one we have to set individually but we can just do the rotation and scale here uh, all transforms would possibly work but in a lot of cases uh, you don't want to mess with the actual location uh, of the object because it could mess up a lot of your other modifiers so uh, we're just going to do um, rotation and scale and that's going to bring it back to how it normally should be um, now it doesn't look like much now, but what's actually happening is uh, all six copies are uh, overlapping each other right now. Uh, if I move, if I move the uh, empty, you can see that they're all moving relative uh, to the empty. So uh, what we can do now is we need to uh, we're gonna offset the uh, the object that we want to rotate around the axis. Uh, there's two ways to do this. We could just uh, bring it back, let's say on the Y axis, uh, and then put our origin to the 3D cursor. Um, that's that's one way. Uh, and then the other way would be if we're right here, we could just have it to edit mode, select the whole object, uh, and then bring it back on the Y axis. This will just move the actual geometry and not the origin, so then when we tab back, uh, it basically does the same thing. Uh, just in, in this case either would work but there could be future cases where one may work the other may not and I just think it's useful to know both uh, what we're gonna do then is uh, rotate the empty on the z-axis by 60 degrees and as you can see the object rotates around the axis uh, in a perfect circle now let's just say that um, this is supposed to be like drawers. You want like drawers in a circle for some reason, and the faces are pointing inside, you want them pointing outside. Uh, the simple way to do that is to go back into edit mode uh, and then rotate uh, your object to be facing outward. So in this case, it's on the X axis, we're gonna rotate that by 180. And now you have all your objects facing outward. And I, I do think it's kind of cool that you could, uh, you could also just like uh, rotate and change things how they look this way um but yeah it's just a pretty easy way to flip around your geometry if it's facing the wrong way so another thing we can do if you want them connecting is actually uh connect these uh by not just visually but actually the software will try to join the vertices together so we need to get the gaps here uh, as close as possible uh so one way that we could do that is tab into edit mode and then bring back the geometry closer to the origin. This is a way to, to do this and not have to actually scale anything because I believe another way you could do this is uh, by scaling, um, but it, it's, not, it's not messing up now, which is good, but the way you're gonna wanna do it uh, anyways by actually uh, moving this here. 
Oh, there it is. Yeah, you scale it in edit mode. Um, so yeah, what we can do is bring it back. I don't know why. Until those are those are pretty close. And then what we do is go into our uh, array settings here, turn on merge and then first and last and then we just kind of mess with the distance until they connect here so now they're they're all connected uh in terms of the vertices are actually snapping together rather than us just kind of scaling it super close together to fill in the gaps so that about wraps up what i wanted to show you um some other cool things about this though are uh it's it's pretty procedural like basically all we have if we turn off the array we just we're just working with this this one piece of geometry here and everything that we do this geometry will trickle down and affect the rest of them so uh, let's just put um, the loop cut here and then let's just uh, let's inset this and now all of them are inset like that so this next method basically does the same thing uh, but has an added benefit of being able to curve the mesh uh, with some slight modification to it so first we're going to start off with pretty much the exact same thing as we had before we're just going to use the same object and then we're going to add a curve circle we're going to keep it in the same place uh, but what we're going to want to do is first put our array on there let's put a couple let's say this one doesn't matter uh, about rotation uh, so I don't have to worry about math let's put 11 just to make it difficult um, so yeah, we're going to keep the relative offset and then let's add in a curve modifier and we're going to select our circle as the curve. Now this works how it was supposed to. If it doesn't, uh, rotate it on the Z axis by 90. So sometimes it, it might be uh outward straight like this and it may not have worked but if you just go into the top view or just rotate on the z-axis by 90 uh you should be able to get it in this um this sort of configuration if not uh try applying the scale and rotation of your object and then uh, rotating on the z-axis by 90. Uh, now that we have this though uh we can merge first and last and then make sure that it's uh, properly properly merging and there you go you have your ring now it does still look faceted uh, which we don't want so like I said there is some slight modification um, to the mesh it may be a little bit difficult depending on what kind of uh, what kind of thing you're trying to put into a circle um, this will be fairly easy but what I would recommend is uh, knife projecting a grid onto your object, uh, assuming that it's kind of flat like this, um, and then that'll allow geometry uh, for it to distort. Uh, but what we can do, we can just add in some, some edge loops here um, to give it some more geometry. And when we tab out of edit mode, you can see that the, uh, the actual geometry is now uh, distorting into a circle. Thank you for watching guys, I hope you learned what you came here to learn. Uh, if not and you need a little bit more help, just leave me a comment and I'll try to answer it to the best of my ability or maybe somebody else will come along and answer it. Uh, but I will be responding to all comments. Thank you and have a great day.